this is Shaylin from Shaylin's Fairy Shop, and this is not exactly a tutorial so much as a bunch of different examples of how I generally do Celtic knots. And I'll go ahead and explain a little bit of what I'm doing here. So I always begin by making a grid of dots arranged into little squares like this. If you're using graph paper, I do them two squares apart. That's my prim primary grid, and then I do a secondary grid. Then between, if you can see these diagonals where I'm drawing the lines, I draw two lines in each diagonal, and these lines are representing the bands of the Celtic knot and you'll see that they're going to be the thickness of the knot. And next I'll outline these bands following an over-under pattern. So hopefully you can follow this. I go over one band, under another, over one band, under another, and I always be sure to bounce off the edges of the grid, treating that prime, the edges of the primary grid as the edge of the grid, as if it's a bounding box. Now the over-under part is by far the hardest, along with making the bands of equal width. And then I just color it in. I personally prefer knots with the background in a darker color than the bands of the knot. That's a personal preference. Color in the background. It's always a lot of fun. You can do it with paint. You can get some really neat effects. That's just basic work with Sharpies. And then here you can see that I'm shading in the over-under parts so that the overlay looks as if it's got shadows. It makes it look slightly three-dimensional. And there you go. There's a knot. For the next knot, I'm going to do the same sort of deal where I'm going to build a primary grid and then a secondary grid. And here I'm adding in walls. These are just more places to bounce corners off of, essentially. Now, in this case, instead of drawing in all of the diagonal lines, I'm just going to eyeball it for where these bands are going to go. Um, this is just something that comes with practice. You'll be able to see where these bands belong. And then, of course, I outline these bands in an over-under pattern, bouncing off the walls. This does take some practice. I can't tell you how many times I have messed up. See, see, I just messed up right there, lower left-hand corner. I did not do the over-under correctly. And, of course, these are just quick sketches, so none of the bands are the right distance apart. I mean, they're not all the same thickness. Then just color it in, decorate it up however you want. And you have another pretty little Celtic knot! So for this next one, I'm going to do a slightly different approach. I'll start with a pencil. I'll draw in a primary and secondary grid. And then add in some walls. I tend to do my walls between dots on the primary grid, but I think you can also do secondary. I haven't experimented enough to tell you how that will turn out. In this case, instead of just following the bands, eyeballing where I believe they will go and where they're going to bounce off, I'm just going to draw in all these diagonal crisscrossing lines. And rather than outlining the bands, I'm going to color it in first. This makes it, it's a, it's a much easier way to do Celtic knots if you're just beginning. Of course, it only works if you're having a colored in Celtic knot. So bounce it off the corners and make a knot. You can see that some people wouldn't call this a true knot because I have a ton of different links. You can see that this is not all one strand. I think I've got like six strands going on here. Anyway, so here I am adding decoration to the corners of the knot because it looks cool. In fact, in a lot of the old Celtic knots that you'll find in illuminated manuscripts, they do this with animal heads and stuff, these zoomorphic knots. It's really, really neat. Anyway, so erase the pencil lines really fast because my hand is really, really fast in this video. Then I just take a smaller pen in a darker color and outline using the over-under pattern. Is it just me or do those little corner things look like hats, like little elf hats? Maybe a hat that Dobby would wear. And it's TARDIS blue. I'm going to go all geeky. So, outline, over-under pattern. Voila, you have a really fancy knot. Now, this next technique is the one where I generally mess up the most, but it's also a really fast cheat. So, you only draw a primary grid, and you can add in walls or whatever, and then major eyeballing. Bounce it off to where it goes. The hardest part here is figuring out where all these lines go. Without the help of the secondary grid, it's a lot easier to get lines way too close together or bouncing off at the wrong places. 
But once I have this line drawn in, then I just outline the bands. Now you can see here, since I hadn't drawn in the bands fully before this, I'm having a lot of difficulties making the bands of the knot be all the same width. So I've got some really skinny ones and some really fat ones. And it's not very fancy, but this is definitely a great way just for practicing if you're wanting to draw something fast and you don't care what it looks like. In fact, you can see right there I had to get a little bit of white out because <laughs> I messed up. And it shows beneath the Sharpie. That's ridiculous. Okay, so coloring it in, obviously. I don't know why I'm narrating that. I'm coloring this in. Can't you see? Color, color, color. It's green. It's like a leprechaun green. Outlining it. I'm going to make a bumpity, bumpity bump all around the edge because I'm following where the knot is. But I'm completely obsessed with Celtic knots, so you'll have no you have no idea how many pages of sketchbooks I filled doing stuff like this. It's a lot of fun. It's a great time killer. So just keep coloring it in and decorating, and I'm adding in more shadows for the overlap. And outlining it in more colors because I can. It looks cool. And now I have yellow and green. And yellow and green is just cooler than just plain green, I suppose. But you can see that I mess up all the time. This is one big Sharpie project that I was working on earlier for Celtic Knox. And you see how many times I did not do the over-under pattern correctly? It's ridiculous. you think I'd learn better by now. But anyway, I got my fascination with Celtic Knots from this really neat video done by Vi Hart. She's a YouTuber who does kind of these artsy, mathematical videos. It's, she's really awesome. And she had a video on, I don't recall if it was like knot theory or something... I'd have to look it up. Anyway, she showed you how to make Celtic knots where you just draw one line. You can zigzag it in and out however many times you want, but as long as the edge connects to the edge, you can outline it and have a simple knot. Now here I am making just a fancier, bigger Celtic knot. Again, just to show you how I work, you can see I have a primary and secondary grid, multiple walls. I outlined the edge of my grid to help me with the bouncing off the edge of the Celtic knot because it's hard for me to keep track. And you'll notice I'm making a lot of mistakes. I'm using my eraser a lot. This is why pencils are important. And then go ahead and outline every band following the over-under pattern. And just because I'm not doing too much with the pencil, that's not always a good thing. You can see that I already messed up and had to use some white out there. If you're doing an actual project with Celtic knot work, do the full thing in pencil first. <laughs> just use the marker afterwards to outline it, because otherwise you're going to make all sorts of mistakes, just like me. So rather having the walls gets a really neat effect. So it's not just this one long strand of a knot. There's breaks in it. And then this is where I go Sharpie crazy. I have this box of almost 48 Sharpies. We got them on a major sh major sale at Staples or somewhere a couple years ago. And I love them. I have so many colors. And I can do ombre stuff like this. And it's awesome. And then take some pencil, add in some shadows on the overlaps of the over-under. And voila! There's another fancy knot. And here I am writing by, in case you can't read that, that says by, and outlining it like a Celtic knot, like Vi Hart did in her video, because I can, and it looks cool. And I'm going crazy. It's really late at night when I'm doing this right now. Oh, look, there's another mistake. I made another mistake. So I hope that that was neat. Thanks for watching. And maybe I'll do an actual tutorial someday. Bye-bye.